Hello and welcome to all new Dragon Quest Builders 2 players! My name is Ben XZ, and as you can hear from my accent, uh, I'm German. I've been doing Dragon Quest Builders videos for quite some time now, I think about uh, maybe three years or something? Uh, could be. And due to the awkward nature of YouTube's algorithm, I thought I'd do a little compilation video of my most viewed videos and my personal favorites. I'm also going to link to a playlist of all those videos at the end of this one, in those, I'll explain everything a little bit more in detail of what I'm going to tell you now. But enough with the introduction, let's start. I've been building a few sample rooms, or to be more precise, uh, sample areas, and now we want to go through them all. So this is the first one. This one came out of my own mind, uh, patents still pending. This is a water storage. As some of you may know, uh, it's kind of hard to keep track of all your water sources on your island, so I've made this contraption where you can hide your water sources inside a wall. And the way it works, you can simply scoop it up like this. Now we have water. Now we have hot water. We have sea water. And we have muddy water. Also works over here. Sea water. Yeah, very magical! The way it works, wait, I can show you. I have filled some 1x3 holes with uh, different kinds of waters, as you can see here, with which the game knows which water gets scooped up first. Uh, I've tried it out, and now I know which priority system is in place. And if you want to know more about this in detail, just click on the link in the description for the magical water storage. On to the next one. So, this is a little display of my item storage idea. With this one, you can simply put all your earth blocks, or wooden blocks, or stone blocks, or maybe also items inside those uh, cupboards and shelves, and this way everything is organized and stored away very neatly. And I have made a far bigger one in one of my videos, and this one is also in the description. This one will be quite interesting for you people with a green thumb. Uh, like I have, maybe. I don't know. This is a crop field design with which all the tilled soil pieces will be watered no matter what you do. As you can see, each tile is right next to a water source, and this way it will always be wet. Yes. And of course this one has also a video in the description, but uh, I don't want to bore you, uh, so I just say it in advance, every one of those areas has a video attached to it. If you're interested in some of those areas, just look it up in the description or at the end of the video, in the playlist I made. After you've played through the story, you will unlock an item gratitude point shop. This will be inside your items list, and this one will show when you press the button for show height point values. This way you can see how many gratitude points each item will cost, and you can simply click on it and purchase it. Very, very neat. And that's why I have some ideas for you to gain the most gratitude points in the shortest amount of time. Each time your villagers eat, they will leave some hearts behind. And the most hearts you can gain from food are with those items. With the finest fruit pie. It must be the one with the 2 star rating. To get this, you will simply need to cook a strawberry or a mawberry with rice plants. Simply place them, place the other one, and cook. Yeah, simply place down some strawberries or more berries and a rice plant inside a chest inside your kitchen. Then the villagers will take those out and cook them for you. If you have cooked them already at least once, then they will know the recipe and they will cook it for you. And once they have made enough, they will place it on the next uh, dining table and the villagers will eat it. Ah, delicious! And if you want to get even more gratitude in a shorter amount of time, there is one trick I did with uh, gratitude farming those liquid metal slimes. Those you can find on Laguna Perfuma, and I would recommend to use a chimera to fly there. Once you reach a certain height with your chimera where he can't go any further up, just let go of him and glide the rest of the way. From there you want to look for a liquid metal slime, uh, and I would recommend to always use the overhead map view. This way you won't have the fog in the way of finding it. And once you find it, simply do a spin attack to glide down to the ground and attack it with a poison needle. And there's about a 1 to 3 chance that he will follow you back to your island. And then simply interact with it once per day, and then it will give you about 100 gratitude points. The next one is a monster trap. Now this one uh, is a bit hard to show on this island, 
because I don't have uh, monster spawns on the Buildatopia. But they will spawn on all the Story Islands and all the Explore Shores. Story Island is also the Isle of Awakening. To make this monster trap work, you simply need to go below a ceiling and the monsters will spawn in the direction you're looking. I think about uh, 16 blocks away from you. And then they will keep spawning inside those spike traps and leave behind all the valuable items. Yeah, I know, it's a bit mean, but uh, it's the best way to farm items. Especially meat, because with the meat, uh, we'll take it out now, some wheat and some cabbage, with those we can make a burger. And the burger is very delicious. In fact, it's so delicious it will give you a food bar. Ban's attack power increases. This means now when you hit an enemy, you will almost do double the damage than what you do normally. Yeah, very, very good buff. There are very interesting food buffs, also stuff like uh, that you can breathe underwater. And you can also move underwater as fast as you would do on land. And there's also a defense buff, and if you gain this defense buff, almost all enemies will only hit you for like uh, one damage. So, while talking about food buffs and attack power, let's also talk about the strongest weapon in the game. For this, you'll need uh, the Falcon Blade and the Sword of Ruin. The Falcon Blade recipe will drop from this uh, killing machine on Rimey Reef, and the Sword of Ruin will drop from this big troll on the Defiled Isle. What you want to do, you want to equip the Sword of Ruin. Oh, this will give you a curse. And as you can see by this little ghost up there in the corner. And now when you try to remove it, it won't let you. And if you strike your sword, sometimes you get stunned. Yeah, not, not the best sword. But what you can do is you can go to a dressing table and change the appearance of that sword to the Falcon Blade. Now when you do that, the curse gets lifted and it will transform into the Uber Falcon Blade. Yeah, it's still called uh, Falcon Blade, but in all the other Dragon Quest games it was called uh, the Uber Falcon Blade. And this one will now have a much bigger attack power. Normally it has plus 42 and now it will have plus 126. And it also strikes twice. So you'll make like uh, 252 damage with one swing of the sword. And if you take your buff food, then you will do double the damage. Next up is how to make windows with blueprints. Because normally when you place down windows, especially those uh, connecting ones, they will always connect no matter what and you can't make those edges inside the window. But there's a trick. For example, let's place down a 2x2 two two window, use a magic pencil. You will unlock this tool by completing 20 tablet targets. And now you can simply draw a blueprint and copy over that design you just made into a blueprint. But before we place it down, let's place another window over here. And now we place it into the center of this one. And now we simply build it. Now, as you can see, the edges are still there and you will have a very interesting looking window. Yes! And you also need to be careful from which direction you build those windows, because if you build them from this side, they will look kind of milky. And if you build them from this side, they will look almost uh, fully transparent. Just try out which direction works for you best, but then you will have a window like this. Yeah, very helpful. And if you want to know more about it, I made a video where I've uh, built this window. Yeah, this one was quite the ordeal, I can tell you that. On to duping glitches. There are now about three glitches inside the game with which you can dupe materials items and other things as well. With this one you can dupe all placeable items and all consumable items. This glitch you can only do in multiplayer. And this one is only for duplicating seeds for uh, crops. Unfortunately, I can't show those off right now because uh, I've hit the limit with this one. So as you can see, I can't interact with it. Uh, this one only works in multiplayer and this one only works with crops and uh, there I'm also at the limit. But more on limits uh, later. The next one is an issue for most of the people that play through the story. 
because uh, there will be a point where you need to build a throne room. And this throne room has like two major problems. First up, you'll notice that this one doesn't get recognized as a room. And the reason for that is uh, the room is simply too big. But of course, the game doesn't tell you how big a room can be. The maximum number of floor tiles you can have inside a room is 150 blocks. As you can see, now it finally gets recognized and we have an enormous cool room. So let's put those banners back up. Now the cool room needs to transform to a throne room. But it doesn't. <laughs> the reason for that is the maximum height of a room is two blocks, but the floor also counts. For example, you can have all the items you will need for a room either on the floor level, like over here, over here, or over here. There, all those items get recognized. And those banners are simply too high up. But we can do a little trick. Let's take a door and let's put it inside this wall. Now we have an enormous cool throne room. The reason is, now this is considered the floor and everything below it, like over here, isn't considered part of the room. But we don't care about that because everything we can now place on top of those floor tiles will be part of this room. Yeah, that's a nifty little trick to make this throne room work. But let's say you made an enormously big room which is bigger than those 150 floor pieces and you don't want to make it smaller. Now I've made the room bigger again so it doesn't get recognized as a room. And now those pieces come into play, the stone doormats. Those you can place somewhere inside the room. Like for example, now we're missing about uh, four or five uh, floor blocks. Simply place them somewhere in those corners. And now it's back to a room. Let's get back to the initial room layout by simply removing this door, waiting a bit and place it back down. Now we have the floor again over here. And those pieces are also very practical for dividing a room. So we can, for example, place them over here. Let's place some down over here and over here. And now we have three rooms in one big room. And we can also make a room out of this top area by placing them down like this. The only problem is it won't get recognized as a throne room because in a plaza only the blocks on the floor level count towards the room and the ones on this level. Yeah, that's a little problem. But I hope I could fix uh, the throne room problem for you. I hope so. And while talking about rooms, I also made a 101 room build, which you can copy over for yourself on my Hyrule Island. The code will be in the description down below, the English Builder ID code. And there in front of the Hyrule Island, I have all the rooms you can have in the game. And simply use the blueprint pencil and copy it over and then you'll have the blueprint in your blueprint gallery which you can take out and uh, put into your inventory on your own island. And then you'll have all the rooms you need. Also here's a very important advice from me. If you play through the story of Dragon Quest Builders 2, make sure to not explore too much of the game or alter too many things. Because I know, I know you want to explore as much as you can as soon as you can. But I would hold back on that and only do it once uh, the story tells you to go to a certain part of the game. Otherwise, you may end up destroying something or altering something and the story won't progress and then you have to reload an old save file. If you do something like that, where you want to explore an area where you're not supposed to be, make sure to save manually beforehand so you can still reload to an older save file and not get stuck anywhere. Next up are limits inside the game. Yeah, it's uh, one of my most hated things about the game. But what can you do? And as you can see, I've placed down uh, quite a few of those chests of drawers. And if we place a few more, this will happen. Let's make it a bit slower. Any more items of this type that you place will not be usable. And as you can see, you can interact with this one, this one, but not with this one. Yeah. Some items will lose the functionality once you've placed down too many of those. I have a whole video where I've checked about every interactable item and where their limits are. But a little tip, as you can see, the top of those drawers 
looks pretty neat and you could use those as uh, floor blocks. Yeah. And if you want, you could even use those magnetic blocks and camouflage them as them. Of course, they're not interactable, but won't take up slots of those interactable drawers. And the magnetic blocks are very, very interesting pieces. Uh, you can find those on the mountain where the Harry Hermit is housing. I think you'll find them on the second level of this mountain inside a hidden cave. There will be a little hole inside the mountain and when you break through it, you'll be in the magnetic cave where you'll learn all the recipes for uh, these things over here. And what they can do, they can move pieces and interact with each other. For example, once you step on those buttons, this piece will move left and right. So if you want to make an elevator or something, those are the pieces you'll need for it. And of course you could also camouflage this one and still use it. Next up are the fright bulbs and the cacti balls. The fright bulb will spawn if you have a certain number of flowers right next to each other and then it will spawn somewhere around there. Same for the cacti ball, but this one will only spawn on sand and if there are some cacti around it. Ouch, 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 ouch. Next up is a tree stump workbench. This one is very, very interesting and behaves a bit differently than the other workbenches because this one will have very interesting blocks which you can craft on it. So for example, like all those uh, more rubbish looking things or more broken down stuff. And as you can see, here are some of those pieces which you can build on it. For example, also those decorative leaves, which are very neat for uh, making your builds a bit prettier. This water splashing stone, those f flower petals, and also the crumbling clot stone, and the shifting sand. And the shifting sand behaves a bit differently, as you saw just now, because if you use uh, the transformer trowel to put those down, this will happen. Everything below you will get removed in a 5x5 area. But I must say, I like the crumbly clot stone a bit more because it has some very nice properties that I can show you. Let's place it down somewhere over here. Because there are some items which will also break away once you destroy the block behind it. Like the rose for example. But if you now jump on this crumbly clot stone, the rose will still stay in place. Yeah, it's a very, very useful item if you want to make some very neat looking decorations. Next up is the Stickless Sifter. This one is one of my favorite workbenches because this one will break away the link of linked items. And linked items are those that when you place them, they will transform into different blocks. Like those timbered wall pieces, for example. And for this purpose, I can also recommend the Ultimallet. This one you can unlock after you finish the story of the game. This hammer will also keep all the items in their state like they are right now. For example, this one will stay in place like this one, and this one will stay in place like this one. But back to the Stickler Sifter, with this one you can change this item, for example, into one of those three pieces. Or the castle wall in one of those four pieces, this one, this one, or those two. And you can also separate those very, very annoying pipe pieces into different pieces, so it's much easier to place them down. And one of the most important parts, you can divide the roof pieces into different parts. This is extremely important when you want to build roofs. For example, let's say we want to make the top of a roof and now we place them down on the other side. And they will connect. But I want to have them like this. For example, like this piece should be right there and not transform. So we make one of those and put this one over there. And this way, the roof will stay in place. Yeah, very important. And there's also another trick. You could also place them down like this. Take the gloves and put them over there. Those are the possibilities with the Stickler Sifter, Ultimallet and the gloves. And of course, you could also destroy those pieces with the Ultimallet and you will have them unlinked. Next up is terraforming and erasing blocks with blueprints. We'll take the magic pencil and we'll make a blueprint out of this one. Now we have an eraser cube. With this eraser cube, everywhere where you place it, the villagers will destroy everything that's in it. Uh, everything but earth blocks. <laughs> Unfortunately, the developers didn't program earth blocks into it, but every other block the villagers will destroy for you. If we place it down over here, 
and if I had a villager somewhere nearby, they would destroy all those pieces and put them in a chest nearby. And then you can simply remove the blueprint again. And then you're done with destroying mountains and stuff. For the other terraforming method, we'll need the bottomless pot with the pot upgrade, which you, I think will unlock with 45 completed tablet targets. Then you can scoop up liquid lava. And with this now, you can simply pour it into water and it will transform into solid ground. Also very important. Next up is how to make perfect circles. And uh, as you can see, I <laughs> didn't make quite the perfect circle around here, but I have a video where I make it a bit better <laughs> than this version. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain of it. Because in this video, I'll talk about a tool which will show you the blueprint for how to make perfect circles. And with this tool, you can tell it how big you want your circles or spheres to be. And it will give you a blueprint on where you need to place down the blocks to make the perfect sphere or circle. And there are also blueprints for other things as well, like uh, donuts and other very interesting stuff. Next up is a uh, signpost. Do the link. Do the link? Oh, oh wait. But nothing happens. Ah, what a shame. What a useless tool. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, if you've played through the whole game, this tool is pretty useless. But the ocarina is good for one thing after you've completed the story. And that is for finding stuff on the explorer's shores. For example, if you have troubles finding orichalcum or other things as well, you can simply blow into this flute and it will show you the direction the material you're missing is located. That's a very, very good use for a tool. And once you've found everything, it's useless. <laughs> Next up are Seeds of Life and Hidden Items. On each of the main story islands, like Forofield, Crumbledon and Moonbrook, you will find three of those Seeds of Life and one on the last island, which you can miss, unfortunately. But uh, luckily, we have a duplication method over there. And as you can see, I've used this duplication method already. And if you use a Seed of Life, you will gain 5 HP. And don't worry, once you've hit 999 HP and you get a level up or use another Seed of Life, nothing will happen. The game will not crash or anything. You will simply not gain any benefit at all. And there are also hidden items on Forofield, Crumbledon and Moonbrook. And I think on each island you can find about four hidden items. For example, those three are from Forofield. But I have videos where I explain every location on every island and then you will find them with ease. Once you have played through the story and you have fulfilled certain criteria, you will unlock those weather cards. And those are very, very interesting. With those you can change the weather on Isle of Awakening. Uh, I don't think over here... Uh, wait, let's check. Nah, we can't. But on the Isle of Awakening you can change the weather every time to what you would like. For example, you can change it to sunny and the card will still be in your possession once you've used it. So you only need one. And you can also unlock new hairstyles. Those you will find in the dressing table up here where the hair and hat is. And then you can change your hairstyle to many, many other ones. Yeah, looks very nice. And you can also unlock some additional story content. To unlock all of these things, you'll need to complete 45 tablet targets you must have created a Buildertopia, like this one, where I am right now. And you must have visited it at least once. And you need to find all the unlimited materials on the Explorer Shores. If you have done all of these things, those things will unlock. Yeah, it will take some time, but it's totally worth it. I can only recommend. Next up is a missable item. I mean, it's uh, semi-missable, but it's very, very tedious to get it after you've missed it. In the last story chapter, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but there you'll get back to the tutorial ship, where you've met uh, the Captain Whitebones. And there you'll find a pot, and when you look inside this pot, you'll find this item, the Thunderbolt Blade. 
I mean, it's not the best weapon in the game, but if you're a completionist like I am, then you will be pretty sad if you've missed it. I mean, there's still a method to get it, and I will link to it in the description, but uh, if you have the chance, make sure to pick it up while you're in the story. Now, I want to talk about the reason why you should complete all 60 tablet targets. The reason is this tool. You can activate it by pressing in the left analog stick and you can deactivate it by pressing it again. But what can you do with this? I'll show you. But first I need to collect some things. You can do anything from a range. For example, use other tools like the transformer trowel. And now we can swap this floor down here into seaside sand. We can use the bottomless pot and pick up this water and pour it over here. We can take those wooden fencing pieces and build them up. Like this. And you can also use the chisel and chisel away pieces that are far out of reach. Yeah, like this. A very, very handy tool for every master builder out there. Or you can use it to simply place down blocks quickly like this and over here ah and now it looks completed yeah very nice yeah now that we've done this let's write this one yay <laughs> oh wait i'm not finished yet we need to talk about a few more things here i want to talk about two things first up the bottomless pot if you want to fill up big areas with water can either do it like this, but it will stop at one point and then you simply need to repeat a few times. Or you can make it easier for yourself by simply building some structures above the surface where you want to fill the water in. For example, over here, now we want to fill it with water. Yeah. And now, with one pour, we have filled the whole thing with water. And I have made a video with a few more examples of how you can use it efficiently. But now we come to those things. Goldfishes and kois. Let's place them down. And I'll also eat some fish and chips so I'm faster underwater. Yeah, and this looks far nicer now. And uh, normally they would swim around freely, but I've uh, packed it full, those seaweed plants. That's why they kind of get stuck there. But if you want to get fish, there are like 40 types of fishes inside the game. And once you've unlocked the Angler's Isle, either with a DLC or it's already included inside your game, you get the fishing rod with which you can fish them up. And I have a guide on how to get all 40 fishes and then you will unlock this beast over here the marine monument yeah it's it's worth it it's very very pretty last but not least i want to talk about a gray area i want to talk about modding yeah and as you can see those things should not be possible inside this game uh, well if you're a very good photographer maybe but uh, <laughs> normally not well we can take a look here we have a Dragon Quest Builders 2, a movie poster. And here we have Attack on Atlas movie poster. Also very nice. Yeah, I've made those myself. And if you're curious, maybe I'll also do a little tutorial in Photoshop how I did the, this one. But yeah, to get those, you'll need to use a certain tool and I'll explain that in another video. Oh, before I forget, one thing I didn't mention in my custom screenshot video is if you want to get those on other platforms as well, simply upload those onto the notice board, go into your other account, like them, favorite them, and then you have them in your snapshot gallery. As you can see, they have been removed, but I still have them. But yeah, I think that are all the tips and tricks I can give you now. Uh, maybe I'll find some more for you. But yeah, I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please tell me with a like. Likes are very important for me, so it gets recommended to more people. So more people will see these types of videos and people will also get warned about uh, these types of things where they can miss stuff. But yeah, I believe you already did it without me mentioning it. So thank you very much. And I hope you have a good day, morning or evening or a very good night. And I'll see you in the next one. So until then, bye. Mm-hmm.
now I need to sleep. Sleep, sleep. Sleep, 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 sleep. Let's sleep.